Welcome to History Snippets. My name is Sarah. I'm the curator of Edwards Place at Springfield, Illinois, and today we are going to talk about Mike Kenny, who is a gardener to the Edwards family. Mike Kenny appears to have moved to Springfield around the time that he was 30 years old, and that was around 1860. He lived at the Old Elliott Place, as Helen referred to it, which was where Andrew Elliott, a pioneer in this area, lived in 1828 when he arrived. Fun fact, Andrew Elliott was a veteran of the War of 1812, and he was also the one who secured the county seat for Springfield. I know that Helen visited Mike at least once at his house near the Old Elliott Place because she did reference in a letter that she had visited him when he was sick. Mike was an Irish immigrant and later he farmed his own land and just like many Irish immigrant farming families of the time, he had a bevy of children, nearly 10 according to the 1870 census. His wife, who was named Mary Kenny, stayed at home and took care of the children and the household while Mike first worked for the Edwards family and then later himself. The Edwardses first hired Mike on as a laborer, and this is evidenced through all the strange, odd jobs that they would have him do before he was ever listed as a gardener, some of which were sweeping the snow off the walk in the winter and running errands for them and checking up on some of their friends. One of his duties in 1868 was fixing things. He was tasked with fixing their water pump once in 1868. Helen didn't seem thrilled with his progress at this and considered taking her laundry in the meantime to the Springfield Laundry while she couldn't use her own water. That laundry had just opened the year before in 1867 by Baird and Smith. Mike also chauffeured the family to various events. I actually <laughs> couldn't believe this letter that Helen had written. And I was well repaid for braving the storm. The wind raged with such fury that I became so uneasy, lest the entire church should be demolished. I could scarcely wait for the concluding piece. However, we found Mike wet and shivering with cold, for there had been a tremendous change in the temperature since we started from home, but glad to see us safely out of the building. And though we made haste slowly homeward, no harm befell us. Mike was thawed out by a good dose of hot milk with sugar in it and a good sup of whiskey to make it relish. Braving the storm indeed. Funnily enough, the first mention that we see of Mike being referred to as a gardener was in June of 1868, when Helen referred to him as such to her daughter in a letter. But he didn't even garden for the family until two months before when he had made up a garden for them. Which, by the way, was two weeks after the offending storm that they made him stand out in. Helen had written in that April, we are having a nice little garden made in our backyard where the old woodshed stood, and I intend that Mike shall keep it in order after it is laid off and planted. There was a little bit of friction between Helen and Mike, or actually all of her Irish servants. She was really not respectful of their faith at all. On Christmas Day in 1867, Helen wrote, I had all my supplies to send down, and as usual, Mike was nowhere until after 10 when he returned from church, and then it was beginning to pour. However, I secured as well as possible the baskets from the wet and sit him on the cars. Helen had more opinions on Irish Catholics in an 1877 letter. The Catholics intend on having a picnic for the benefit of the new church, which is soon to be built. And I suppose we Americans may spend this national holiday at home and let our foreign domestics celebrate the day according to their own pleasure. I almost wish the day as one of merrymaking and celebration might be blotted out. However, I must not grumble. This is one of the trials which housekeepers must endure. Unfortunately, this was a common attitude toward immigrants at the time. They wanted the cheap labor, but they didn't want to have to respect their servants as people with their own cultures. Mike ended up tending his own farm sometime in the 1870s. At that time, he was listed in the city directory as a farmer, not as a gardener or a laborer. Mike seemed to live a quiet life without rocking the boat too much. And he may not have anything flashy to his name, but I don't know. It's comforting to realize that we may be remembered someday, even if it's just because one of our employers complain about us. Thank you for joining History Snippets this week, and we will catch you again next month. Thanks. Mm -hmm.